Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order at uh, 6.07. Um, I guess we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I have my little flag here. Can you all see it? <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. Okay. <laughs> all right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for one nation under God, under God, liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we start off with um, the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Um, I'm not sure that I got those this week. I don't have them printed off here. Did anybody yeah. else get them? Yeah, they did go out. Yeah, those huh. were the ones that I did. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, yeah, I didn't get them, so I didn't read them over. I just realized that. <laughs> I was so busy with budget stuff, I didn't even think about it. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to put that off till next week. Get then, the me and I'll track down a copy. So, yeah, I didn't get them either. I like to read them. So Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll make sure everybody gets them, and uh, we'll do it next week. Okay. Do we have any changes or additions to the agenda? If you want to raise your hand, probably be the best way to... Does anybody have any changes or additions? No? Okay. Um, then we have public participation. Hi, Anne-Marie. Yes? Um, Jessica Wilma. I don't know if you can see me. So um, I'm a teacher in fourth grade. Yes. And I, I want to share with the board. Okay. I don't know if that falls under public participation. It's not pertaining to anything else on the agenda. Okay. Um, how long of a presentation is it? Um, I think it's what? I don't know. Eight slides, maybe? Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, then. Okay. Um, so I'm actually, I've got my Chromebook and my, this is my iPad because Robin couldn't hear me when I talked to her earlier today. <laughs> I can hear you now. Good. Um, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I want you guys to know that I have um, I have talked to both Jean Marie and we've talked to, I've talked to the union. Um, so I'm following chain of command. Um, but I also want you to know that um, your teachers aren't doing well. I'm just waiting for my screen to load. We can um, see it now. So I'm going to share with you these things as I go through, but you'll be able to read them because you can all read, thanks to teachers. Um, <laughs> we have expectation and expectations in excess at Wethersfield right now. Um, so first I want to talk about the interdisciplinary units. They're supposed to be co-taught, but we haven't gotten support with modeling or professional development. So we're kind of just muddling our way through. Um, they require a lot more planning time than we've been given. Um, so we're building them in with our, while we're flying it, which is not generally a good practice, especially in COVID. Um, I do, however, love our specialists. I'm speaking for myself right now, um, but there are a lot of teachers on this call. so they might be supporting me. I don't want to speak for them. Um, wind time is supposed to be intervention. Other sc schools are using it as an extended day. It takes much more intensive planning because students require individual attention. Um, the intervention falls primarily on classroom teachers. So do COVID protocols and it's a struggle just to kind of get through the day. Once we're at wind time, it's, it's been a long day. Um, it's unbalanced because the concentration areas are math and reading. So if teachers have to teach um, other people how to do that, then it's more 
planning time. So a lot of times teachers just take on all that extra work themselves rather than teaching a paraprofessional to do it. Um, when logs have been called in and given to Dr. Baker by our principal, Jean Marie, um, they're not required to be given to other administrators. I don't know why. When logs take additional time, oops, sorry. I have to go back. Um, when logs take, take additional time, um, so I end up not putting all of my WIN students in there because it's just a lot of time. Um, in-person teaching and remote teaching are different, but we are in-person and remote teachers. We need a lot of time to prepare ourselves and our students for both. Um, I don't know if you know that the AOE has mandated 5.5 hours of remote time for grades three through eight, but that's preposterous. Um, if I gave my kids that much work to do in a day, they would be struggling. We're faced with the knowledge that we may have to quarantine with our class and teach remotely. There are no parameters for that circumstance. I'm concerned that we will make an already stressful situation worse on all parties if we don't have a cohesive plan. So that means if one class has to quarantine, not every class in the school. I'm the teacher of record for remote students. I have not met yet. Uh, the regular school day. Teaching during COVID is stressful and intense. Many of our students are demonstrating real anxiety. I'm always dehydrated. I think that's because I wear a mask and breathe through it all day. I'm not complaining about mask wearing, but I just wanna make that clear. Um, we are forced to go by scope and sequence of VT, VLC, but we are noticing major gaps and we have to remediate those during WIN. Um, we are made to be the COVID police because a lot of our students like self-report that they've been places and done things against the governor's orders. I have barely enough time to prep for the normal school day, which is shortened, but it's intense. So it takes a lot of planning because I can't like run to the copier during my prep period. Oh, that was me just being petty. Wait, no, it's important for me to be petty for a second. <laughs> Some teachers don't have to provide win time, and I'm not, I, I'm happy that they don't have to. It's a lot. We aren't allowed to see friends and family. No one is, um, but it adds to the stress. We can't really have a lot of fun with our classes because we have to go, go, go. And again, that falls along with the scope and sequence of VTVLC. At 6 a.m., we are on because we have to fill that form out. Many of us are ignoring symptoms of COVID because we chalk it up to stress. Poor eating habits and having to speak through a mask all day. And I just want an excuse to remind you all that diarrhea is a symptom of COVID. That's a joke. <laughs> We're drowning. These are some possible solutions. I'm not, I want to make it a point that we are not trying to get out of work. We are at our breaking point. So that's it. Thank you very much, Jessica. We appreciate yeah. hearing this. Um, I, I have like to read the. I like to read those final solutions. I only got through two of them. Were there five of them? Could maybe she could read those to us out loud? Well, send them to us. I mean, this is the first I've seen this, so you if could you paste wanna, them into the chat. Send and them we to us. See them. Would, yeah, that would be good. I mean, this may be, and, and by the way, just one correction there. I mean, and I know Jean Marie uh, has certainly been, uh, you know, asking, you know, for those logs, and that's not so much for people like Jessica, but it's just to keep everybody accountable. I don't get those logs, though. I think in there, Jessica, you said that Jean Marie sends those to me. I, I, I don't get them. Uh, just so I can make a point of clarity, the reason I call those logs in is so that I can offer Angie Ledoux support for the remote students. We have some remote students who have expressed a great deal of difficulty. And I've had remote teachers actually write and thank me for making that available. So when I call in logs, it is true. 
I gave 11 names to Angie. Not everybody's doing win. It's true. And we want everyone to have something to do, of course. So why not the people that aren't doing win? I'm going to have them working with the remote students during win time. So that I call the log, not just really for accountability, because my teachers are working very hard. That's not it. It's who's available to help kids. Plus, I get emails from um, parents who say, my child is struggling, can you help? And I will go to a paraprofessional that works in that classroom and say, are you available? So it's a combination of things. I, I know. I, I just do those things. I'm, I'm saying it's just one more thing for us to do. It, and it's fine that we have to do it. I don't, I don't do all of that time. I don't put in all of my students because some of them aren't signed up for win time. I just help them when they need help. I just have a comment just to kind of back up to 40,000 feet. Um, I just want to say thank you to Jessica for expressing this. It's, it's courageous to do on behalf of a lot of other teachers, not just yourself and things that you've been hearing, um, you know, directly or indirectly. So thank you for doing that. Um, I'm married to a teacher, not at the school, but at a different school. So I see the stress the teachers are under and I've heard you know, teachers using the expression that they are end of year tired and have been end of year tired for like weeks and weeks already. So I want to know that you're, I want you to know that you're heard um, and seen um, by lots of people. Um, so I'm interested to work toward solutions because we need teachers to be able to support our kids who are also struggling and teachers who are not feeling supported or who are majorly stressed out can't help others, um, right? The old expression, like put the air mask in the plane on your own face first so that you can actually help other people. So we need the, we need the oxygen flowing to the teachers <laughs> um, in order for them to help everyone else. Yeah. Very good point, Robin. Very good points. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I would also like to thank, uh, to thank Jessica. Um, I've heard from not other teachers in our school district, but other teachers that I know um, around. And I know it's extremely stressful for teachers everywhere. Um, and I'm not sure what we can do about it. I would ask Jean Marie and Angie and David for ideas. Um, plus the, the ones that you gave, I would ask them if those are practical and if they can do any of them. Um, but we also just wanna make sure that you know that you're really appreciated and we know it's hard. and we're sorry that things are the way they are, <laughs> but we appreciate it. Um, do any, does anyone else have anything to add to what Jessica said? No, I just think Jessica, if you could send that PowerPoint to Jean Marie or, you know, or, or me or both of us, and then we can, we can take a look at it. I mean, certainly we, and I think I say it every time I send out uh, any, any sort of a note to the staff, the incredible, appreciation we have for our staff members this is not normal times it's incredibly stressful if there's some things we can do to relieve that you know you know we can certainly talk about that and so just send that along i know that we're looking at semester change which is january 22nd as a time to you know maybe make some changes and we're in dialogue with the administrative team we've got the reopening task force up and running again and we will be talking to the union leadership about that changeover time. And we do have some ideas that might eliminate that wind time in the afternoon. Um, so we're, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not unaware. And I, I do think it, it is courageous to, you know, to speak up like that, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll take those under advisement and see what we see what we can do. Okay. Um, I'm about to call on um, Diane Stilson, um, but if in the future, if anybody has something to say, if you could just down at the bottom, if you just go down there, you'll see there's a little raise hand icon. Just click that and then I know you need to speak. Okay, so um, first we'll start with Diane. So I, I know there's only so much time allowed for public participation, but I, I wanted Jessica to know and for you all to know that, you know, there are other teachers that are thinking this also. 
I know that Dr. Baker has sent out those emails and thanking all of us and Jean Marie has too. You know, myself and, and most of you know me um, and I'm pretty organized and structured. So I have this little cart where I go upstairs and I'm just gonna give you some samples of what I have done. So I push my cart up, I get to the elevator, I go upstairs, I do the fifth and the sixth graders or the seventh grade upstairs and then I pass by the elevator heading towards the stairs with my cart. And I've stopped myself three times this year, like Diana, where are you going with your cart? You, you can't go down the stairs with it. So then I turn around and I'm like, okay, hold on the elevator. So then I get in the elevator and then I start speaking to the elevator rudely because it's not moving. And I don't, I'm like, why aren't you going anywhere? And I have either, not punch the button so it's not going anywhere or i've hit the button on the second floor and of course it's not going anywhere because i am on the second floor so you know dr baker knows me for a long time here and he knows how i am those are just they're minute things but those are just little things that it shows the stress level and our mindset of what we're trying to do and and, and I'm sorry to get personal, but trying to fit in a bathroom break is amazing. And I just say to the paras, can, may I go to the bathroom now? And then I say, thank you for letting me go to the bathroom. So it's like, we're lucky if we get once or twice to get to the bathroom. And yes, Jessica has said that, you know, I watch what I eat just because we can't get to the bathroom. And I know that we have our prep period and our lunch period later on in the day, don't get me wrong. But once we hit the ground running, we hit the ground running, not only to go to a class like the middle level teachers, but also to teach. You know, I have to bring my cart, my document printer, my Chromebook. I have to make sure I have all my math assignments. Do I have the calculators? Do I have cap erasers? Do I have the pencils? Do I have sticky notes? Did I bring my paper clip? You know, so there's a lot of things that goes into this year. And like you said, Mrs. Redman and Mrs. Tyndall, that you said, it's amazing in September and October that you feel like it's already June and how exhausted. And it's not like you can go home and, oh, I'll go home tonight and get a good night's sleep. It It's the same thing. We had our Thanksgiving break and I was looking forward to it. But I have to say, I, I didn't necessarily get re-energized. So I didn't want Jessica to be out there by herself because it is brave to step up. Um, but I wanted you all just some examples of what's happening to me personally at the school. Um, and we don't have time, like when someone says to me, you know, Diana, you forgot to do this. It's like, hold on. I have so many things between the mask, washing our hands. Did they use the hand sanitizer? Did they get their forks? Don't share that. You know, don't touch his pencil. You know, today I had to tell the eighth graders, you can't share mittens outside, <laughs> you know, because you're putting the mittens on some your hand and then you can't give it to Joe or Sue to have it put on her or his hand. So there's just so many different things that we have to think about that by the time everybody goes, you just want to sit down and say, Whew, we're done for the day. <laughs> Um, so thank you again, Jessica, and thank you all board members and staff and everybody. Thank you, Diana. You're welcome. Um, can I hear from Mark? You have his hand up. Yep. Um, I primarily just want to know what it is that we can do as a board um, to support more directly. Um, as far as the day-to-day -day items go, I'm not sure what expertise we have or what kind of support we can lend, but uh, primarily to David and Jean Marie, what are our options um, for pushing back against the gorilla of the five and a half hours direct instruction a day? I mean, that, that to me seems to be at least the only thing that I could get vocal about that I have some level of experience with, because as far as how else you manage your classroom and your individual pupils, I, I can't help with, but that one seems to me, how do, how do we address that? What David and Jean Marie in, in specific, any ideas? Well, first off, I, I'd like to say that 
the teachers are working extraordinarily hard and I know they're tired. We start by, well, they're in the classrooms in the morning and then there's a barrage of us that are doing the health checks in the morning, greeting the buses when they come in. They all use different doors. And I think what's really plagued us this year, and it's true in Jessica's room, we were short three special ed parents. Now, Katie has been just relentless in putting that ad out. And I know I've put it out in the parent uh, link. I put it on the website. We don't have anybody who wants to work in public school. I wonder why. So I do have three classrooms that have no, they don't have a parent in them. So those guys don't get to have a bathroom break no matter what. I mean, they can call down to the office, but it is a dilemma. And then we had three, three or four who didn't come to work today. Some days we have eight. By the way, they're not the 14 classroom teachers. Their attendance is almost perfect. It's everybody else. So it puts such an added burden. So we're already three people short, three classrooms without helpers, and then five, six, seven people call it. It's a nightmare. They're lucky they haven't had COVID because that's a whole different nightmare. So it's not a party. It's been very stressful, very hard. And I think we all feel it. What can we do about it? Well, the State Department of Ed, it isn't David, it isn't the SSU, the AOE gave those hours out. That came from the big guns. So yeah, that's my question, do we have any footing to push back at all on that? I'm going to let David take that one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've pushed back on a few things, but I'll tell you, unless you get a groundswell of all the superintendents pushing back. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't get you, you know, very, very far. I mean, we've been basically, and I think part of it's local control in, in, in uh, Vermont, but essentially there is no statewide plan. It's basically just here are the parameters, here are the guidelines, you figure it out. And oh, great. And, 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 to, and to the credit of the staff, I will tell you a lot of people, work a lot of hours and i'm talking about teachers and union yeah. and nurses they worked a lot of hours this summer trying to put this plan together this wasn't just you know thrown together in an hour i mean we we spent a lot of time uh working on this and you know we still need to tweak it i think jessica's right i mean there's ways we've got to look at this but i mean i know the teachers did not ask to work in this environment uh parents did not ask to send their kids to school in this environment I mean, I think we're just up against this and we're in, I, I like that analogy as somebody just said, you know, we're, we're in the end of the year blues. I'd, I'd like to think, you know, with some level of a vaccine on the horizon and, you know, the semester change on the 22nd, we might be able to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But I think we just have to hold each other up if we need to take mental health breaks or more than bathroom breaks, we need to do that. But I think we, I know no nobody knew that this was going to happen. I mean, it's I who could have predicted it. But I mean, I think we've got good boards, we've got good teachers, we've got good administrators, and I think we're trying to gut it out. And I think we just have to, uh, you know, just keep the discussion going and figure out ways in which we can, uh, you know, we can make little tweaks here and there. I don't, I don't think we're going to push back big time, though, Mark. It's 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 uh, it's it's. I think it's too. Uh, it's it, the government's too big well a angie's correcting me i i, I don't want to um i don't want to waste time talking about situations that aren't actually there it looks like that that my assessment of direct instruction needing to be five and a half hours is incorrect yeah right we've and we've tried to make some concessions and you know we've let our teachers know and i know it's still not easy that you know, that doesn't mean, you know, five and a half hours in front of a screen. It means that there's got to be some instructional, you know, uh, 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 sort of interchange, you know, with the kids and engagement with the kids. But it's just it's it's just not easy. And I think it's the it's it's, it's the frustration that you're hearing in the voices. And, you know, I hope I, I hope the winter break comes and I hope people do get a chance 
That's the other thing. We didn't get a chance over Thanksgiving to be with our families. It was the first time in 40 years I didn't have my children, my grandchildren. It was Mary Ann and I here with a 10 pound turkey. I mean, that's that's very unusual for the Baker household. Um, and, and that was stressful. And I think it's all of those things added on to everything else that just, just is exhausting for everybody. So, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the honesty and I, I'm glad we get a chance. We've got boards that are open to listening and, and we'll, we, we will do our best. I noticed uh, other hands are up. Yeah, I want to call on Jackie next. And Mark, can you put your hand down if you're done? Yeah, just click that same button. Yep, yeah, thank you. Okay, Jack. Uh, of course, the dog's going to choose now to bark. It's my <laughs> no, sorry. Um, I'm going to ask a very, I guess, obvious question. I'm sorry, it's kind of like being late to the party. But um, have the teachers gotten together and put together ideas much like the presentation you just gave, which I will also say is very courageous. I'm just curious if you've gotten together and put together ideas that would work for our school, that we can do, that are, you know, we don't have to wait for the state. Are there ideas that you guys have come up with that will help you in your day-to-day -day that you can present to the board again? Sure, I'll, I'll say that we, I I mean, as a collective group, we don't know what we can ask for and what we can't. Um, in our contract, it states that we're supposed to have a, um, a planning period every day under normal circumstances. Um, it's one class period planning period every day under normal circumstances. These aren't normal circumstances. I don't know what we can ask for. I don't know how far we can go. I know that... Um, I know that saying things out loud tends to get it discussed. And I think that if teachers feel like they have a voice, they feel like they can ask for stuff. But I can tell you this, that COVID does not make us, anyone feel like they can ask for anything. It makes us all feel like just glad that we don't have COVID. So, we, I mean, in-person teachers are, we're actually thankful that we can be around our kids every day. I mean, we're that grateful. We don't really want to speak up. But when I see my coworkers, when I am crying on my way into work, I don't cry on my way into work. I never have cried on my way into work. Um, when I'm doing that, I know that there's a problem. And I know other people are probably going through the same thing that I'm going through, but they're not going to talk about it. I'm a loudmouth, so I tend to speak up. And... Um, you know, everybody keeps saying courageous, but I, I really feel brave. I got to be honest with you. I mean, maybe I am getting myself into trouble. And if I am, then I am. But the fact of the matter is we are, our, the classroom teachers, our specialists, I mean, I'm not even talking about our school nurse is, I mean, she's overwhelmed. Our Laura Berry has PE equipment that she has to wipe down, you know, all the time just so that kids can share it. I mean, if that were me, I'd be like, okay, we're not kicking balls today, guys. <laughs> um, but, you know, she's doing it. We are all doing it. It's just that when you feel in November that you wish it was June, th there's no math there. We need to fix something. So, yeah, Jackie, we have gotten together. We've talked about maybe we need to ask for not having to do wind time or maybe wind time needs to be cut down a little bit. Maybe we need to ask for more planning time. But like I said, I don't know what we can and can't do because of COVID. This is a new circumstance for everybody. We need new parameters. We need, we need new rules. I guess maybe I'd add to that then, if there are two or three items that you collectively as a group go, out of everything, let's just, these are the three most wanted wish lists. What will make us the, you know, only three things. Agree as a group what that might be and bring those to the table. Maybe you get them and maybe you don't, you know, but at least it, it puts you in a position to try to get, um, to put out what you need the most. That I guess that's the way to put it. If you could get one thing that you need the most that you guys feel, and maybe it's doable. Maybe, you know, I don't know if that 
like I said, late to the party. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Um, the discussion. Um, I guess I'm going to call on Lori Small. Lori, did you have something to say? Is Lori there? David, can you see her? Does she have her mic on? Uh, she was there. Um, okay, I guess we can skip to, oh, she put her hand down. Okay, uh, Robin? Robin um, just, yeah, first of all, I'll just echo what Jackie just said, that I think that you should feel empowered and encouraged to come up with creative solutions, right? Like no one has ever done this before, or since 1918, no one has taught through a pandemic before. So there are no rules that apply necessarily completely strictly. I think that you should be creative in suggesting rules and, and guidelines and asking for things. Um, I was just going to bring up one, what I think is obvious ask, but it's not obvious enough because I know of school districts that are doing that, doing it. And that is intensive um, professional development that goes over teachers planning periods um, for things that are not like remote learning related and, you know, teacher requested, I think should be forbidden, like put them off for a year. There should not be professional development on something that we made a plan last year or two years or four months ago. And we can't just soldier on, like do the professional development. There are schools that are doing that. And that is ridiculous because I know schools where they have taken, taken away let me see at this point, it's been like, I don't know, 40 hours worth of teacher planning time to do something that is not COVID urgent. So I would encourage anything there that's on the docket to be taken off so that teachers planning time can be preserved. Good idea, Robin. Um, does anyone else have anything to say? Any other topics for public participation? Okay, I guess we'll move on to our items for discussion. And item A is um, the, 20, the 2022 budget update. Who's going to be taking care of that, David? Yeah, I, I think uh, there have David, been... Can you hear me? Yeah, there have been a few changes, Ed. I think Ed's going to... Can you hear me, David? Yeah, yes, I've we got... can hear you, Ed. We can Thank hear you. you. Okay, so um, I, I think everybody got the budget, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at it? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, the, I, I think the best place to start would probably be at the, um, uh, the, the account summary. And David, can you bring it up? Yeah, I think I can. Hold on. Hold on. I want to just get there. Um, Today is the 8th, right? So let's go in here. I think I saved it in there so that we've got it. Yeah, all right. So it's it's coming up now. Hold on. I'll get it to uh, – I'll have to present. Hold on a sec. We're getting there. Okay, I think it's on the screen now. Uh, you yes. want the account? You want the account summary, Ed? Yes. And okay, there you go. Can everybody see that? Okay. I think you could, if you can make it a little bit bigger, it'd be great. Yeah, let me see. Maybe I can. Although I'm told here that. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. Um, okay, so what I did here was. Um, if you take a look at your spreadsheet, there's three tabs. And on those three tabs, they're labeled function sort, account sort, and um, account summary. And again, not to be redundant, but what I'm trying to point out is there's three or four different ways to look at this. And I presented two of them. And that's simply because there are subsections in each in the budget unit that we use for the 
state uses that allow you to sort on function, which function would be regular education, um, uh, guidance, um, uh, English, math, those would be functions. And then uh, accounts are ranges of accounts that are take into account wages, benefits, contracted services. And this summary is just taking all of those in the uh, general fund, putting and, and uh, putting them together and comparing them between given years. So if we take a look at the top of the account summary and the wages portion. You read across, you've got FY20 budget, FY20 actual, FY21 budget, and FY22 budget. And then the next column is the difference taking the 22 less the 21 budget. So using the wages as an example, the wage increase from FY22, a proposed wage increase from FY22 to FY21 is $128,449. Um, but then right on down the line, the benefits are up 66,000, contracted services are up $8,600, repair and maintenance are down 12,000. Transportation, which uh, all student transportation for to and from school was moved to the supervisory union. So that's down 239,000. So the rate, rather than billing the school, they're going to be billing uh, the SU and the SU will pay it and your assessment will reflect an increase for uh, that. Um, communications insurance and postage is down 300. Tuition is up 452,448. Travel is down 1,800. Assessments as I've outlined is down is up 197. Those assessments include um, the central office, special education and early childhood. So at the central office, the increase is primarily the increase for uh, moving transportation to the supervisory union. Um, supplies and textbooks are up 600. Energy is down 4,300. Equipment's down 1,000. Dues, fees and transfers is down 1,800, $18,000. And debt service is up 7,000. Now, just giving you the quick, I didn't mean just to read it out to you, but does anything in there that you guys specifically want to do address? I have three questions that I got from Anne Marie that I would I could go right into, or I could address questions you have other than that. Um, it looks like Jackie has a question. Sure, her hand is raised. Jackie, you want to go ahead? Oh, now her hand's down. Kristen? Sorry, Brusso. that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Kristen Brusso, do you want to say something? So does this, this includes the, like in wages, does that include a, the difference is, includes an assistant principal? Is that why it's yeah. okay? $80,000 of that is the uh, proposed salary for an assistant principal. Okay. I think... I guess like at this time, just like while we're, we're, we are recording and everyone's here, like I think I've had time to think of that over and just seeing like such a huge increase during such a, a rough time. I, I don't know if I can fully support that. Um, I think just hearing from our teachers, I don't know if having another administrator is going to benefit them maybe and, and i'd love to hear from any teachers that think that might, that that might benefit i don't know if we can go into it thinking that the next principal that we hire won't be able to do it they do the job and i think that it's our job to make sure that they can or to hire somebody that that can do it um so i'm just i think i'm having second thoughts about the assistant principal just seeing this huge increase and then going and asking taxpayers you know, especially during such a, you know, during a pandemic, it, it seems a little crazy to ask for a, a budget that's, you know, nine and a half percent higher than last year's. And that's it. Thank you, Kristen. Jean Marie. <clears throat> Thank you. So I, I wanted to mention that the budget that I uh, presented or Ed and I in unison presented on uh, November 10th showed a 7% increase. And that was without summer school and without an assistant principal. And 
Robin asked that we put it in so that we could look at it. And that's what we've done. And so that 9.48% increase represents 10,000 for summer school. And I just wanna remind you why we put that in is because we have some kids that are in person and some kids that are remote that are struggling this year and they won't be ready for next year when they go to the next grade level. So the point of offering summer school is to get some kids uh, up to snuff so they'll feel like they can do it when they start in the fall. And that I would support. Our poverty level is not low enough for us to receive Title I funds. So for years, since I came here 11 years ago, I put in summer school and I paid for it using Title I funds. We don't have that anymore. So that 10,000, I would recommend that you keep in there, which would, if you do, that'll raise that 7%, maybe just a little bit. I don't believe, I believe that we could really use an assistant principal. This is not the time. There are too many other pressing things and you don't know, you might get a principal that doesn't feel they need an assistant principal. So my recommendation would be to cut that from this second draft budget. The other thing I want to mention, and Ed can go into this with more detail, this is just preliminary at this point. You know, it might look like 7% or 8%, depending on what we cut tonight. But when you start looking at the CLA and just all the other factors that go into, you know, that worksheet Ed presents, he doesn't even get those figures typically till the end of December or the first part of January. And it, it we could be looking at a 14% increase. I, we don't know. There are so many unknown variables at this point. So I just wanted to bring that up so nobody feels duped later on. I will also say that I know that when BJ and I worked on the budget, it was an austere budget. We cut everywhere we could. And the only thing we added was an LNA, 25,000. That is the only thing we added. And the reason we added that was because if you remember the November 2nd memorandum that I've sent to the BAC and you've all seen it, it shows you the difference between the folks that retired and who we hired. And there was a savings. And the nurse asked for that LNA. And she's done a yeoman's job this year. And she's worked so hard leading the COVID task force at the district level. So I did put it in. So what, what was the 7%? All the variables I can't control. You guys negotiated a contract with support staff. It was a good contract. You're negotiating one with teachers. You'll do a good job. Health benefits are up. Things that I can't control brought that budget up 7%. Anything that I could control, if you were to go line by line, BJ and I were so careful to bring that under budget. And I just wanted to make that point. Thank you, Jean Marie. Mark Yingling, did you have something? Yingling? Um, yes. Um, um, could we just go over the assessments line one more time? I know there was something with busing being moved to the SU. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just unclear about what 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 happened with the assessments. Thank you. Yeah. It actually seems that like we're saving money because um, we used to spend more on busing, but we're, our assessment isn't going up by that amount. So it seems like we're actually saving a bit. Well, yeah, to Mark's point, um, so in a normal year, the 200, it's actually $232,632,632 $232, is what you would have paid in FY22 by contract for transportation. And um, so if you take a look at the FY22 budget um, and you add to that 6,000, if you add the 232,000, that's what it would have normally been. But we took the 232,000 and we put it at the supervisor union as part of the central office assessment at the behest and direction of the state of Vermont. 
They are now sending all reimbursements directly to the supervisory unions rather than breaking it out for us by, by district. So that's why it's the way it is. So that the 239,000 decrease in transportation is offset by the $197,000 increase at uh, SU. And just another point is that the way we do the assessments of the supervisory union, we do the assessments with the equalized pupil. And historically, uh, of the three districts now, Heartland, Monoscotney, and Weathersfield. Weathersfield has the smallest amount of equalized pupils. Therefore, their percentage of the equalized pupil count is less than all the rest of the district. So that may be why you're getting a less of a of an increase because you're when we go to eat when we take the total amount you need for the assessment, you're only paying about twenty two and a half percent of it. Okay, that clarifies it. Thank you. I also want to make the point that I, at the last meeting, there was a lot of conversation around the tuition. Um, the fact of the matter is, is I've, I've went out and I, I, over the last month, I've had uh, Lori uh, Brown at the SU office who does all of what we call tuition vouchers. So in order to get your student paid for with uh, tuition paid for, that parent needs to fill out a tuition voucher and then it has to be submitted to the central office. Lori is the conduit from what all that comes through. And they've got to provide certain information to verify their residency so they make sure that they're really residents of whatever town they're coming from, or their, their students coming from. So my initial um, budget had, I had Lori's count because they thought the best count would be the one where the vouchers. If we didn't have a voucher, we shouldn't be paying tuition. So I said to Lori, what are the counts? And the counts are based on um, the kids that are in, I can get the counts for the vouchers for nine through 12 in FY21. And then what I can do is I can simply take the, FY, the, the 12th graders, take them off and say, well, I know they're not gonna be here next year. And I move everyone up a grade. And then I talk to uh, Weathersfield and get an idea on where they believe their eighth graders then it's very difficult in September or October to tell, especially in this kind of thing, where these kids are going to be going for their ninth grade year. So Weathersfield DJ makes her best effort at that. And then we take that number and we make that the ninth grade. And then we go ahead and we, I take the announced tuitions, the tuitions that we're paying in this fiscal year, which is 21. I look at that. And I'd say, I have to assume a certain increase. And in this year, I took a 2.5% increase. And then I simply say, all right, how many kids are going to Windsor? How many kids are going to Springfield? How many kids are going to Hanover? And I just take those numbers, and I use their announced tuition with a 2.5% increase, and I just do the math. And what I've seen this year is and when you look at the FY21 number, that is, a, that is a budget, tuition budget number for 86 students. And the current year, or the FY22 year, haven't had, and I think BJ can, can verify this, her and Lori had several conversations around this. So right now we have 106 we're budgeting for. So that's a 20 student increase from FY21 to FY22. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of them could be that the class that's graduating is smaller than the class that's entering. It could be that that there, what we've seen in other towns has been that there, there's been a lot of movement of people from other areas into new towns, especially Heartland and Weathersfield. And they, they've moved from down south, southern New England, back up here, a lot of it related to COVID. And they have kids in high school, and the attraction for Weathersfield and Heartland is choice. So that is certainly a factor in this. But that's where that four hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars is coming from. Okay, Ed. Um, I guess I had a couple of other things that I was asking you about. Um, yep. I can certainly address those. There are three questions that um, Anne Marie. Uh, asked about one was what Kristen already addressed and that was do, does the wages include the assistant principal so all in the assistant principal 
together with their benefits was $80,000 for a salary and there was $34,582 for benefits. So that's 114,582. So those two numbers, one's the 80,000 you see in the wage line and the 34,582 is in the benefits line. So if I go down and I take that out of that, down at the very bottom, you can see it's a $583,000 increase or 9.48%. If I take the 114,000 out, the increase becomes That's a 7.62% increase. Could you say that again, Ed? When I take out the assistant principals, wages and benefits, the dollar amount of the dollar difference between FY22 and 21 is 469,202. And the percentage increase is 7.62%. Yeah, which is pretty much what was presented last, more or less, what was presented last time. Mm -hmm. I think I think part of what you're up against, and Ed mentioned it. You've all said it. I mean, and and uh, and it's it's you know it's a benefit of of a tuition town, but you know I I think you are seeing people move into the area and move into these tuition towns, and you that's that's a that's almost a half a million dollar. Uh, increase. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, there's not much you can do with that. It is what it is. And I wish I could say it's going to get better because I think, you know, people have learned that, you know, the Northeast is a, is a pretty safe place to live and that's what they want to do. They want to come up and do that. And, and when they do, they look for those tuition towns. So, I mean, you're already, that's 28% difference right on that line alone. All right. So the other question was, you had a question around um, physical education. And that question was that she looked at the uh, function um, sort and she said, uh, I've noticed that the music and physical ed teacher salaries were not more compared with others, over 10% increase. What is the reason for this? So when I took a look at it, um, the increase for the wages in physical education is 3.52%. And that can be explained by uh, an anticipated increase in wages and a 10% increase in health insurance. So that increase itself is accurate. The other increase in music, I made an error there. I increased the salary by more than what I had anticipated for everyone else, significant. So. When I correct that, there's going to be a $3,392 uh, adjustment. So it'll be a take that out of what I'm currently presenting tonight. So I didn't take it out because I, I would stick with what we sent out. So when I make the correction to music, I am going to find myself with a, or your Weathersfield's going to get, uh, going to lower the cost of the teacher by $3,392. $3, and then finally, um, the other question was around guidance. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not quite clear on what that question was. So I would ask for some more direction on that. Um, well, I just had noticed that overall the guidance department, um, you know, the, the line by line where you went up the different like, um, it just in the guidance, the guidance department, the uh, salary was up over seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, and I and I and it seemed that way in the thing. Maybe I'm wrong about. I was no, reading it. Well, you could be right. I, I, I might have made the same mistake in guidance that I made in music. So let me just double check here. I think she has more experience, Jean. Right? Yes, she does. Yeah, she has, I believe, seven years of teaching of working in public school yeah. and jenna was uh she was with us two years she was a first and a second year guidance counselor so uh melissa cole has more experience so that would change okay. the placement on the salary schedule okay i i imagine you did not make a mistake on that ed but you can check no it. i just checked it. it it doesn't i made the. it's not the same mistake i made on the other one it's, it's that is correct okay but it's because she has more experience than the previous guidance counselors. Right, She's right. being compensated for that. Okay. She gets paid at a different rate. Yes. Um, and then my other question had to do with the electric bill. Um, oh, yeah. 
it seemed like the savings on that wasn't quite what we were expecting it to be. I think we thought it was going to be like a 10% savings and it was only well, how, a few I came dollars. The, how I came up with the electric estimate is I took the, uh, the last, I took, went back to FY 18, 17, no, uh, 18, the last five years, essentially, I took the uh, increases, I, I took the total amount that we actually spent from each year, and then I made it, I created a four-year four year increase. So I went from 17 to 18, I came up with a percentage increase, 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21. I took those percentages, I averaged them together, I divided by four, and then I multiplied last year FY20's actual by that. And that's why I came up. Now that doesn't reflect the current um, the, the new solar at all because none of those bills would have this this current year would be the first year we'd have that. I certainly can go back and adjust that down ten percent if that's your sense. But I thought I would play it on the safe side and mm -hmm. include what I did. But again, I can adjust that down. Okay. Well, we we know we're going to save ten percent this year, correct? Like we know the bill's supposed to be reduced I by ten percent. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but it, that sounds right, Anne Marie. Um, but what we could probably do now, Ed, is 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 take, you know, take the bills that are coming in now with that solar array, and just see if we can get some sort of a sense of what's coming in monthly, with the adjust with the solar adjustment. Yeah, like maybe compare last December to this December, and just see you know what the savings was, and then just multiply that out throughout the year right it's I also not going to be smooth at all because they're south no. facing and we're going to get a lot more savings mm. not in october november december january are going to be the worst ah uh, okay yeah you're right yeah that's a good point Rob. yeah that was my fear rob and i i don't i've in the past with other school districts when you deal with solar it's not a smooth Five percent every year. At five percent every month, it tends to be a lot more in the summer. Yeah. I mean, I make five percent of what, or ten percent of what I put in there is fifty-two hundred bucks. If you want me to take it out, I can. I think we can. You know, we can watch it this year. I mean, that's certainly given the. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's going to make a tremendous difference. But no. Okay. Uh, looks like we have some more questions, Mark. Mark, did you have a question? No. Jackie, did you have a question? Uh, I did. Um, going back to the guidance services, just curious about the change on the professional educational services. Why is that such a dramatic change? Uh, which part, which one are you talking about? The account summary? I think she's uh, talking about the detail. Went into the function sort, sorry. Okay. Oh. Dug, dug into that area. And, it just goes, and you're asking me for guidance? Guidance so, services, yeah. Guidance services, professional education services, 24,000. Uh, that's the same as it is this year. It's called We Are Hope. Okay, that explains it. We Are yeah. Hope. Thank that's you. your, yeah, because you've always paid for that extra hour, Gene. I mean, that's another place where you know, once we start looking at tax rates, we could cut. Well, actually, David, only 18,000 of it is We Are Hope because you promised to pay another 9,000 out of, um, I don't know, Medicaid, I think. Um, I believe, BJ, you correct me if I'm wrong, but that might be where we have the EST 504 line for kids that need uh, support. They're not on an IEP, but you know they have a 504 plan, and that's where we have to pay for assessment and sometimes services. Tutoring. I think that is in that line, Jean. Yeah, I think it is too. I don't. Yes, it is. Okay. It is exactly. So we are hope is really only eighteen thousand because that pays for two hours every single day. Have they been able to come in during uh, the COVID or have we no, not been? They're, yes, they're part of the staff. They're there every day, two hours a day. Okay. All 
Are you done, Jackie? Yes, thank you very much. Right. Uh, Kristen, you have a question? Yeah, I had a question about the, so Ed, I'm in the, like the more detailed one, the function sort tab. Um, and just a question about the building operations interior. It just seemed like a lot of those, um, a lot of that went up, like, and it just says like non-clerical, like went up 20,000 and um, I don't, is that a person or is that, what is that? Building well, operations. We, um, we have a to be hired position in there. Okay. And that position is uh, a, with benefits is uh, $49,000. And it replaces rolling. I think it was part time. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, he was part time. Yep. Full time in the summer, I think. Okay. And then also, Anne-Marie, I had a question, and it probably is to like G Marie or BJ. Like when does our um Weathersfield's poverty rate get reported? Has that already been done? That would be a good question for um Angie. Yeah. Oh, Angie, okay. I think it's in, is it in October, Angie? Yeah, so when um, Larry's doing the data report, he um, he submits it using October data. Okay. So the numbers that will inform next year's um, free reduced lunch um, percentage are based on uh, the previous year. Yeah, okay. and I know that the, the Larry and Ryan I know they've been get they've got a they've gotten a lot better of working with Gene and BJ around making sure that number's accurate because mm -hmm. that, that that was a problem a few years ago, but I mm -hmm. think we I think we solved it. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I know we talked about it on the last SU meeting, and they you know it was just like potentially like an online thing or the form, but um, I just wanted to make sure just because like obviously we lose out on other funding if. Yeah, yeah, and I made a note. I made a note, Kristen, uh, on my notepad here that because we did talk about this, that we've got to, even though all kids are eating this year because of the the uh, uh, the uh, free and reduced lunch program is feeding all children through the end of the year, mm -hmm. but we've gotten a little sloppy. Of, you know, we've got it. We've got to get those free and reduced lunch apps in because that's how that poverty is determined. So I made so a note. And that's not just Weathersfield. Yeah, so I'll just, um, there's a few ways that we get, that the state calculates the free reduced lunch rate. Not, it's not only from those forms. There is, um, I can't remember what it's called, but um, maybe BJ knows. They get a report, each school gets a report from uh, child nutrition, I think. Direct um, certified. Direct certified, thank you. Sorry. And then other agencies, um, other agencies report students who have, I mean, children who have families that have had services or have been identified um, that way. So it's not, it doesn't entirely depend on the um, forms. This year, um, we have the particular challenge of families that are remote only. And so getting, um, as you can imagine, getting paperwork from those families has been extremely challenging. Even though I know that all the schools sent out um, paperwork to those families and had them, you know, we have electronic versions of the free reduced lunch application. Um, but one way about if it's if it's automated in the um, system, then it it can be just like you fill out your. Um, you fill out your your health information every year. You update your address. You update your free reduced lunch application every year. That way, we would be assured that every family has completed one. That's a good idea, Angie. Yeah, so I, 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 think I would like to, had to, I would like to say yeah. one more thing about uh, the, the the free and reduced, and and that that's all. All of that funding is basically for title, and it's it's title money. But from a budgetary perspective, it really it doesn't have anything to do with our budget because any services that are provided with that title has to be additional services. It can't be replacing services. I can't go in and say, I'm going to pay for this teacher so I can reduce the general fund by this much and increase my, uh, my uh, title 
budget by this much. We'll get in trouble for supplanting. It's additional services only. So again, it's important to understand how we get it, but when when Angie puts together the title budget, it's for services that go beyond what we're able to provide with the general fund. But I think last year we had to fund the right the title January the title teacher because we didn't get the funding we had to fund it in our local budget so I just want that to is see. that is correct there was way back when when Title One paid for uh, the reading specialist and then we got a math specialist and we took on the reading and because our poverty rate went down. Um, and that was due to the error, which did not happen this year. But that there's one year, Angie can tell you what the term is, but they can uh, give you grace for one year. And then we knew we weren't going to get it the next year. So in order to keep Lori small, we had to put it in our local budget. Yeah. And, and so then the ramifications of that would be, so say for example, you would, the poverty rate went up again and you qualified again, then you would have to go, you'd either add another interventionist position if the funds allowed it, or you'd have to um, not have that position in your local budget for at least a year so that we could then say we were not supplanting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions about regarding the budget? Yeah, and, and just to Anne-Marie, just so you know, I mean, it's certainly too early to, we're, we're not gonna adopt this budget tonight. I mean, no. I think that the next step is that Ed gets those state numbers, he does that tax worksheet, and then the real discussion starts again. And, uh, and I think, you know, uh, uh, we had, we had a, a short meeting with uh, the few folks who stepped up to be on the budget committee. That was helpful the other day. I know Becky, you you know somehow you didn't get invited, but we'll we'll make sure you are. We'll take one more look. We'll take one more look with them before we bring it back to the board. Um, you know, we could either have a, a special meeting at the end of December or just wait till early January uh, and and get it done. I mean, I th that's usually a long meeting because that's the meeting where we're we're looking at uh, the tax rate and we're making some tough decisions about uh, about how this goes. Okay, sorry, I just had my son come and roll, <laughs> bringing me uh, in a little bit flurry, but um, <laughs> all right. Um, let me see. Uh, the next item is um, Hicks Nichols teacher rep. Tara Smith, is Tara here? Yeah, Diana Stilson. I know she's on the on the line, and uh, uh, there was we, we didn't have the. My understanding is, and somebody can correct me, but we didn't have the right uh, we didn't have the right uh, number of people in, in each of the categories. I think we needed a board member. Did we need a teacher? I, I, I I'm not sure, but maybe either Diana or Jean can can kind of bring us up to date. What do we need to do tonight? Anything? Well, David, the um, the Hicks Nichols committee that we had previously chaired by Laura Berry was dismissed by the school board. They were thanked for their service, and the board wanted to look at another way to form that committee. And in doing so, they um, had a certain number, like so many parents, so many community members, so many teachers. But we found that there was an imbalance in that there was only one teacher. And Diana is on that committee. So Diana asked that there be at least one more teacher on the committee. And I think Diana's here tonight to ask the board to accept the nomination of Tara Smith, our librarian, as a member of the Hicks Nichols committee. Yeah. And then I, I know that those that membership uh, a breakout is right in the bylaws, I think. So so yeah, so you, you it would be good to have another teacher. And then I think there was also uh, it says an administrator or a board or, or a board member. 
So we need to. Uh, I think I was already appointed to be on that. Yes, Kristen's already on it, David. All right. So, sorry to hear it, Kristen. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'm glad you stepped up uh, to do that. But 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 certainly that's an important committee, and uh, I really want to thank Diana Stilton for stepping up. I mean, she she got this crazy email from me saying I'm not. I'm not sure who else to turn to at this point, but we've got to convene this committee. And she, you know, she she pulled it together. But so it's only Tara Smith we need to appoint tonight, then, Jean. Yes, that is correct. So somebody could just make a motion to do, do that. Do we need to um, also change the bylaws, like add a person to the bylaws, or just we can just appoint her? Um, like, do we say two teachers. We do we need to add that? Yes, from the committee. So I am not privy to any of that. I was on the committee. I know there was some dissatisfaction with the way uh, money was awarded. So I don't know what the bylaws say. And I'm not on the committee and I'm not privy to that. Diana has her hand up. Okay, Diana. Okay, so Laura Berry, um, Dr. Baker did is correct. He did email me and say, Diana, could you get this going? Could you volunteer to be on the committee? So I have all, everything from Laura Berry. That doesn't mean that I'm the chairperson or the in charge person. It was just passed to me for holding. I'm just saying that. So um, there were some questions in regards to the committee. Um, so it says here, at least two community members, one parent, two teachers, one school board member, and or the principal. So um, we do already have some because they, they're easy. It was either Dr. Baker or Jean Marie, but everybody sent emails to whoever to get on. So I myself am on. Um, um, Amy Beth Main, Jessica Sargent, um, Kristen Brusso is going to be our board rep. I am lacking a teacher. Um, Will Hunter is also on it. Um, somebody might get mad at me. Um, I think Mrs. Sarguso might be on it, but I'm not sure. I'd have to go back in and check all the emails that Dr. Baker had sent me. So I'm looking tonight to get the other teacher on board based on the bylaws. Yeah. So okay. Tara Smith has volunteered to be the other teacher rep with me. Okay, that's great. So that's already in the bylaws then, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, do I have a motion to add Tara Smith to the Hicks Nichols committee? Mark will so move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Kristen. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, it looks like that passed unanimously. Um, Tara Smith is now a member of the Hicks Nichols Committee as a teacher representative. That's great. So, Jean, will you notify her or Diana? Somebody will notify her, right? I can, Dr. Baker. Thank you. Let her know. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then we have um, athletics and sports update up next. Yeah, who's taking the lead on that? Is Jessica? I saw Jessica was on earlier. You actually said you would update the board at the November 10th meeting. Yeah. You wanted to wait for the oh, okay. governor okay. Yeah. to make his recommendation. Yeah, well, well the, the, the update is not very strong or deep. I mean, right now, as Jessica will attest to and Jean Marie will attest to, that the governor has, until further notice, put all athletics uh, on hold. So... <clears throat> We're not really expecting, even at the high school level, uh, to see much happening until after the new year. Um, so I just appreciate everybody's patience. I know it's 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 tough. It's another it's another anxiety producer because it's great when you can get kids out running around and and competing, but we haven't been able to do that given the governor's directive. So I think that's just the way it goes, and uh, and we'll hang on we'll hang on tight till. Uh, we were going to wait until after the new year anyhow for K-8, but even the high school has been postponed. And those kids are chomping at the bit, believe me. Okay. Um, then the next on the list is a COVID-19 update. David, that's probably you. 
Yeah, COVID nineteen update. I mean, I think you 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 certainly got the uh, you got you got the downside and the dark side of the COVID nineteen update. It's 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 taking a toll on on staff, on administration, uh, on uh, on parents, on students. Uh, you know, we we are seeing a little light at the end of the tunnel, but uh, but it it continues to be uh, it continues to be a challenge. Um, I know that we did uh, uh, we did do a survey after our remote week, uh, and uh, we're looking at those data results now. I think the good news right now is that uh, several of the parents, uh, and of course this was across the SU, said that th th there were uh, improvements in instruction. And Angie, you can certainly back me up on this. From last March, when we had to go into this remote setting with 24 hours notice and the work that went on during that uh during that uh um you know so we had more time to plan and i think teachers did a much better job with that remote i i've talked to my fellow superintendents in the southeast and again everybody did something a little differently everybody's got a different schedule but uh there were only three of us out of the out of the 11 southeast districts that took that week after thanksgiving we were one of the three but in talking with those superintendents, because we meet every week, uh, this this last, uh, you know, the Monday after Thanksgiving, what they found they needed to do was, you know, send lots of students home, send staff home. It was it was difficult. I think the fail safe of having that extra week just gives you a cushion of time. It, it wasn't meant to be, and I hope I clarified that in my last email to parents. It wasn't meant to be a, a carte blanche to go ahead and celebrate. Hanukkah and Christmas and all those holidays. Uh, we'll, we're going to find out on Friday whether or not the governor sticks to his multi-household uh, campaign. And that's that's kind of where we are. But uh, again, from the health checks in the morning to the way the teachers are organizing during the day and keeping kids in safe pods uh, and the uh, careful dismissals, I mean, I really think, uh, you know, the staff deserves credit. But if you don't think it's taxing, it, it is it is very taxing and so we you know we will continue to uh, uh to take a look at it i think our school nurses they deserve the shout out they got uh in their local schools and uh in the last email i sent out to parents those nurses have worked hard the lnas have uh have worked hard uh, and i will tell you people step up uh i know i see christine Bourne is on the uh is on the line she's the principal at heartland i think she had the record today 12 people out uh, so what happens when she has 12 people out is everybody, including Christine Bourne and her assistant principal and anybody else, you know, they're, they're, they're working, you know, in those classrooms there, you know, and, and, uh, people are just stepping up to the plate and doing what they've got to do to keep these kids in pods and to keep these kids safe. But it is a, it is a stressful, uh, time and a stressful in, in environment. Um, and, and the last thing I'll say is that, uh, that I think hats off to, you know, also to to the parents because I think they've been incredibly patient through this. And you know, you watch as parents drop kids off in that eight to eight thirty slot. They've been incredibly disciplined about that. They answer the questions, you know, as honestly as they can. Uh, uh, they will call us if they've had to do a multi household gathering, and they're quarantining. We do have a few kids that are quarantining and a. And, and I think maybe one adult that's quarantining right now, but I think it's a community effort to stay safe. And I think that's exactly what's happened. We'll, we'll see what happens on Friday with the governor's directive. Um, uh, I just got a frequently asked questions uh, 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 document today on, on the multi-household, multi a lot of questions about what that means and when I can visit a family member. And we're gonna try to get, it, I think the principals have already maybe gotten that out to, uh, 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 to parents. And and then after the holidays, uh, we're working now with the reopening task force. There are teachers on that and uh, two, two people from the hospital are on that task force. The administrative team, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about what can we do second semester. Uh, and we've got some ideas. We've got some ideas even that will hopefully relieve that afternoon time uh, for teachers. But we've, we've got to it, we're going to have to figure out. It's a work in progress. We don't we don't have anything to present tonight. Hopefully, we'll have something to present uh, to the SU board in uh, in early January. That changeover is January twenty second, 
by the way. So I don't know if anybody else on the line has anything to add uh, to that, but it's, uh, you know, healthcare workers, emergency responders, uh, you know, police, uh, you know, they sign up to put their life on the line. Uh, teachers, I'm not sure they signed up to put their life on the line. And I think that's part of the stress that, that we hear in presentations like Jessica gave uh, tonight. And, uh, but they've done it and they've done it with dignity and, uh, and uh, patience. And I, and I think, uh, you know, they, they deserve uh, a lot of credit. Um, so if there's anything else anybody wants to add, that's about it from my end. Okay, thank you, David. Um, I had seen Diana Stilson's hand up, but now it's back down. So did you have something to say? No, I didn't. I don't know how to, I didn't, I'm uh, sorry. No, I don't. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> We're all learning. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to switch around the next two items. Um, I'm going to do the BAC members first and then do the new board member. Excuse me. This is Jackie Lindemode. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. Do you mind if I say something? Oh, yeah, go ahead. And just so you know, it's um, if you just kind of move your mouse towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little icon that says raise hand. And you just I'm put it on my phone. Your... So for some reason, I can't get those icons. Oh, OK. If you, yeah, but I guess. OK. OK, go ahead. So just to give you a little perspective, um, I'm a Weathersfield parent as well as the Vermont Department of Health chronic disease designee um, for your district. So unfortunately, I couldn't unmute after Jess Wilmot's presentation, but I just first want to say thank you to teachers, um, support staff, administration. You've really done an amazing job. Um, Secondly, I won't go into a lot of detail, but I actually just put the Weathersfield School 3450 certificate in the mail today. Um, and this is a, uh, it speaks hugely to your commitment as a school um, to the health of the students and the families in our community. But with that certificate, I also included a letter um, that just said, please, 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 during this time, consider your own mental and emotional health and the mental and emotional health of your staff. Um, as your chronic disease designee, I'm more than happy to support you in any way that I can. Um, we do have presentations available through the Vermont Department of Health. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know. Um, also, just a note on COVID, as the Vermont Department of Health, we definitely recognize that the guidelines in place are currently really tough. Um, they're tough on parents, they're tough on families, they're tough on staff, and having staff out is definitely tough for everyone. But let's be real, we're all human. The guidance may not always be followed, and it's not a time for judgment, um, but a time to offer kindness and empathy in hopes of being met with honesty. As a contact tracer for the Vermont Department of Health, I always want people to be honest, and this is what's going to help prevent an outbreak. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's it. Thanks, Jackie. Sorry, I had my mic off. I just wanted to thank Jackie for um, for speaking and uh, for what she does. It's awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so next we are going to go on to um, we. The board needs to approve the BAC members. Um, we have two. I have three members um, for the BAC. Uh, well, I don't have my sheet with their names written down. Uh, I know there's Becky Chrisinger. Um, Jamie, uh, Jamie. Jamie Turner. Jamie Turner. Jamie Turner and Janine Saragossa. Okay. And I guess we need a motion to approve them as members of the BAC. Do you, would you like me to have them introduce themselves first, or do you? I think the, I know. I see Jamie. I don't, uh, and I see. Yeah, I see Janine too. Okay. And I know about Becky. Um, um, Jamie, do you want to go first and just kind of give a couple words about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Jamie Turner. I have a son that's in first grade, and I have an accounting background. Um, I've actually worked the last six and a half years at Valley Regional as a staff accountant. So I'm hoping I can provide some assistance with the budget. Great, thank you. Um, Janine? Hi, I'm Janine Saragossa. I have a first grader and a seventh grader. And um, 
I'm not financially <laughs> experienced, but I have a lot of experience in schools. I'm a school psychologist for the past um, 20 years, so um, I'm hoping I can just, you know, provide some help and um, help out however I can. Great. Thank you. And uh, Becky Chrisinger, we all know her, but still, if you want to come and say a couple things. <laughs> She's trying to find, there she is. I'm Becky Chrisinger, and I've been the board secretary for a long time, but I did serve on, on the back committee, I think, before I was the board secretary. Um, yes. And after. So I volunteered lately because I didn't know if I really, but anyway, uh, Anne Marie recruited me because I have done it before, but I think these other ladies will know as much as me. <laughs> I just thought if there's something. Mom, I said, pretty much I'm going to support whatever Jean Marie Oakman says. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that or not, but I'm just yeah, saying, like, her and BJ work really hard on the budget. So I'll look for things, but I know how hard you guys work on it. So, um, and I really respect that. But, um, you know, there's, as you can see, there's not a lot of areas for us to cut or give input in but it's important we look at it too. Great, thank you. Um, so can I have a motion to appoint these three lovely ladies to the BAC? So moved, this is Robin. Do I have a second? Mark will second. Okay, and um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sounds unanimous. Unanimous. Okay, great. Thank you so much for volunteering, ladies. Uh, we had a hard time getting a BAC together this year, given all the circumstances and everything. And I think it has to do with the meetings needing to be online and everything. It sort of excluded some people from it. So um, we're very thankful that you came forward. Yeah, and we'll be in touch too, Anne Marie, with them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we'll probably meet one more time before the holidays. Just you could see there are some things that really need to be decided everything from the assistant principal to some of those other salary line items so we'll we'll get you know the jean marie and uh and bj if she wants to join us with that bac and we'll just kind of go through it one more time okay all right and then um now we have to move on to um the board members um unfortunately tonight um one of our board members is going to be resigning but it's due to a move, so not really a sad thing. But um, <laughs> Robin, did you want to say something? Yes, that's me. I have to resign because I've moved uh, not far away, just up the road to Woodstock. But uh, that means I'm no longer a resident of Weathersfield, so I cannot represent uh, the population of Weathersfield on the school board. So sadly, I must resign. Mm. All right. I guess we have to let you go. <laughs> You're, you're well, thank you so much, Robin. Yeah, you <laughs> great job. Um, I did have, Anne Marie, I just had one comment, one like item I wanted to bring up before I oh. resign officially. Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and this kind of fits into that um, what we talked what we about talked earlier about. of the rules and how we fit things into COVID. And so the thing that I'm bringing up, and this is from someone who is a, I am a social media skeptic and I am a screen time skeptic, big time. Um, I really police those things with my kids and always have. Um, and I have not looked at the acceptable use policy since the beginning of the year for the Chromebooks, but what has become clear to me, um, and this is in a family where we have, we're fortunate enough that we have four computers. Um, we have our work computers, my husband and I, we have a home computer, um, but I have found that those have just been a lifeline um, to things like healthcare, mental health care, social time with grandparents and friends, um, you know, all sorts of things that we never could have anticipated, of course, when we wrote acceptable use policies, however many years ago. And so I would just like to ask that some of those things get reconsidered. And I think it's okay to be very specific with exceptions. I, I don't necessarily think that people, that kids should be watching Netflix on their Chromebooks. Um, 
I think that there's things to consider that we wouldn't want to be bogging down the system, right? Like we don't want apps and video games and things that are going to hinder the performance of a Chromebook. But I imagine that there are families out there that are having to compromise their values and break the rules in front of their kids because they have to use the Chromebook for a meeting or they have to use it for a doctor's appointment. And that doesn't feel good to be breaking the rules in front of your kids. And so I think that there should be some exceptions um, for socializing with friends or family, um, for medical appointments, and maybe a couple of other things that I'm not thinking of right now. But I just wanted to throw that out there um, as something that could be rethought possibly and help families in this crazy situation. Very good ideas, Robin. Thank you. Um, I guess I need to take a motion to accept Robin's resignation. Nobody's jumping at that. Accept <laughs> Robin Tindall's resignation. <laughs> Could I have a second? Mark, you're all there is. Yeah. <laughs> Can I do it? <laughs> you could do it, Rob. Last act. <laughs> no, we're not allowed to go. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Well, thank you very much for your service, Robin. We appreciate it, and we hope you'll come around and visit our meetings every now and again. <laughs> and yeah, we have good ideas. Robin was not on the SU board, right? Or were you, Robin? No. no. Okay, that's good. Yes, um, feel free to stick around, Robin. But <laughs> if I were you, I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> I have work to do, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> but, well, thank you I'll all. Just pour a glass of wine. Bye bye. See you, Robin. Good job. And then um, the next thing I wanted to bring up is that we were lucky enough to get an awesome volunteer to uh, join the school board and everybody was very excited to have her come back. <laughs> um, Jackie, I don't know how to say your last name, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, she has agreed graciously to come back and uh, serve on the board to help us through this time when we're down to just three board members. So um, she's going to come and um, I'd like for her to take Robin's place just due to uh, the fact that Sean's term was gonna be ending in March and I'm gonna lock Jackie in for the next three years. <laughs> no, I, but, think, um, I think the important thing, Anne-Marie, and I, I saw your email and I think it was a, it was a good question. I think that's a good idea. I mean, the bottom line is Jackie knows uh, when you appoint a board member to replace a board member, whether it's Robin or Sean, I mean, Jackie's would have to decide to run again in March anyway. This is only going to be yeah. good through March, but I think what, well, through the next what, election, correct? It's right, good. through the next, right, whenever, whenever, whenever that is. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, uh, but, but, uh, you know, Jackie, I think what Anne Marie's trying to say is it would be great to have you stick around for that longer term than the shorter term. <laughs> And I'll be glad to do it. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Can I have a motion to appoint Jackie to the Weathersfield School Board? So moved. Do I have a second? Kristen? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, we woke Kristen up. <laughs> okay, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, that's unanimous. So, Jackie, you're uh, now a Weathersfield School Board member once again. <laughs> hey, Marie, I just need a clarifying. I do need to know which uh, position she is taking. So, when we go to do elections, yeah. that, that's the Robin position. She's going to do Robin. Yeah. Okay. And we still need another school board member. If anybody on this call is interested, um, we do need one more school board member. So um, please email BJ a letter of uh, interest and she will forward that on to us. Janine and Jamie, I hope you're listening. Um, but we, that would be, that would be fun. Uh, Jackie, I know you know this, but you know, you can stop in the town hall anytime and, and get sworn in. 
I'll take care of that this week. Great. Okay. Up next is a pavilion update. So I, I think I'll take that one. The pavilion is done and it's gorgeous. And the faculty and staff would like to thank the school board, our kindergarten teachers who had a lot to do with that, Mrs. Robinson and Mrs. Powers. We had an anonymous donation and the Hicks Nichols grant that made the final project um, able to occur. And I want to say, BJ, help me with the money, but I want to say in the end, it was just over 30,000. Is that about right? She's turning her mic on, shaking her head no. Uh, nope, you're still off, BJ. Now there you're off. Uh, I think it was around 20 to 25. Uh, I think Laura and Leanna are both are on here. Oh. And I just was emailed the re last invoice today. So, so Laura or Leanna, can you give us a final accounting? I thought it was 25 and then there was an additional expense, but apparently I'm wrong. And they're not coming on, so maybe they're not on. So, but I would like to thank the Hicks Nichols Committee, the anonymous donor, the two kindergarten teacher, and the school board for that. And Nick. Zanstra is the gentleman that worked with the two kindergarten teachers and his team from Knock on Wood Starworks. And they did a really great job. And then they put some hidden things in the concrete, which the kids are really excited about. They um, put some leaf prints and they put a penny in for good luck. And so Nick says he hopes everyone has fun finding them and the, the structure is there so everyone can enjoy it for years to come. And I will, I've actually finished my newsletter that'll go out Friday. And that's the first story with a picture of the kindergarten kids in the pavilion. And I also added it to the town report. So we're gonna get the good news out there. Okay, great. Uh, we had a little update from Leanna Robinson. She said um, she was double checking and it was 23,500 was the final total. Excellent. Thank you. That's good to know. Thank you. And um, our next item is the principal search committee update. Yeah, uh, and I, I think I don't know if I'm the only member of well, BJ's with me here. BJ is on that committee. Uh, we've had uh, 20 plus people step up to the table and and, uh, and they're part of that principal search committee and uh, and the search committee because there was so many they uh, appointed a, uh, an executive board so there uh, there's a chair and a vice chair and BJ and I sit uh, on that uh, on that committee as well um, and there's one more too BJ I'm not sure who that fourth member of the of the, was it a secretary? That's right. Nicole is our, is our secretary. Um, but but I'll tell you, they've been working really, really hard. Uh, we, we, we have probably in excess of, of 30 applications. Uh, right now, they're vetting those applications. They're looking through uh, through the through the resumes and the applications and the letters of interest. And uh, we have a meeting, uh, I think, tomorrow night, right, BJ? Yeah, we have a meeting tomorrow night uh, to uh, to, to uh, Talk about the process once we get through vetting those uh, applications. But we, we're using a pretty stringent rating system. Uh, you know, I think we'll be probably interviewing eight to 10, what we call semi-finalists. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to send uh, on to the school board uh, maybe three or four finalists. And, and that'll probably be sometime in January because uh, we did get out early, which is great. I think that's why we've got the number of applications that we have uh, and uh, I just want to uh, say thank you to those to those volunteers who are who are part of that search committee it's a large one but it's very well represented uh, representative of of the town of Wethersfield and and the staff so um, so I think the board can be uh, assured that whoever you get for the finalists will be will be uh, will, will be top shelf so 
hopefully we'll just keep moving along and keep you posted. Okay. Or any questions you can ask me or BJ. All right. Um, I guess uh, Jackie's also on that committee, correct? And it's fine if she stays on it. Cause yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jackie. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then I guess we have the principal report up next. Jean Marie. Yeah, thank you. So as luck would have it, there was only one person in our school that got COVID. So I might as well make a public statement about it. Yes, it was me. And I survived it. You can't keep an old dog down. So <laughs> But I have to tell you, people were so generous. I'll start with the administrative team. Every day they brought something and they decorated my yard front and back. They brought <laughs> stuffed animals and Christmas decorations and a wreath and food and bread. And it was just amazing. And I, I will tell you, it's centered in my eyes. So I didn't really look like myself had a lot of double vision and blurred vision. So I know when BJ dropped the package off one day, today she said to me, it didn't even look like you. And it didn't look like me. I only had about four rough days, but you know, kudos to the Department of Health, Vermont Department of Health. I had to do a serif form every day. Oh, getting feedback. Are you hearing feedback on that? Okay, I did. Good. Yep, go ahead. Sounds like it's better. So I will say that I had both uh, David and Emily and I met with the Department of Health um, on the day it was discovered. And it was really, you know, they offer up the free tests at the schools, and about 50% of our faculty and staff did it. I did it. I never, ever expected them to tell me I had COVID. I was sick on the weekend. Luckily, the test was Thursday. I was sick on the weekend. And then I found out Monday why I was sick on the weekend. Never crossed my mind it was COVID. And that's because I've been religious about wearing gloves when I pump gas. When I go to the grocery store, I make a list. I go in, I get what I want, I go out. I don't talk to anybody in the grocery store. So I was pretty surprised at that. Really, I only had four rough days and the, the rest of the time I had to stay in isolation for 10. But I have to tell you, people were incredible. I received, I even got a get well card from the post office. So I one family made a video of their little boy just wishing me well. I had a lot of cards, a lot of calls, a lot of emails, and it just really reaffirmed what what an incredible community Weathersfield School is. It's just a wonderful place to be. And I felt very safe and appreciated and people checked in every day. And I just want to extend a thank you to all of the students, to the faculty and staff, to the parents and the community, because it was shocking. And to my administrative team in particular too, they really wrapped themselves around me from a distance and it made a difference. So I did want to share that with you. And, you know, I, I do hear what the teachers are saying. It's really been rough. And I wondered how Christine did today with 12 out. We've suffered through on days when we've had eight out. And you know, you would not, everybody's working so hard. Our food service program is phenomenal. And I mean that. And those two gals in the kitchen work so hard. And the meals they put out are incredible. And remember, on remote days, we're feeding home study kids, we're feeding uh, remote only kids, and in person families. And BJ told me last week that we, I want to say one day, maybe more, served over 200 families and kids, right, BJ? It was actually over 200 every single day, five days. And they got all those meals ready and they're and they're just delicious. So I did want to share that with you. The other thing I wanted to share with you is Angie LaDue sent out uh, 
a remote only and in-person parents, the letters to those parents saying, if you want to return at the start of the new semester, which begins um, January 25th, let us know. And I know right off the bat, I've got about 10 kids that are returning. Three of them are in sixth grade, which is my biggest class. Not sure how we're going to handle that. We're going to wait to see what the governor says about that. I do know at the seventh and eighth grade level, we have to be six feet apart because of their age. So that number is, uh, you know, uh, right now I could take a few more kids because we're in the band room for eighth grade. And I think that's what Diana was saying to you. Her home rooms, uh, you know, in the band room on the first floor, but her classrooms on the second. And she does serve uh, different classes on second floor too. So it, it's really been tough. Um, and I, I know, I think tonight, Jessica probably represented a good section of faculty and staff. It's, it is hard. I think it's hard for everyone. And then add, we had eight people out more than one day. We had several days and we're understaffed right now. So it, it does make life tough for all of us. And I just wanted to thank the faculty and staff for hanging in there because I, I believe that there are days they don't want to come into work, but they don't want to let the kids and families down. And I just, I just want to say thank you so much. Oh, sorry, I had my mic off. Thank you, Jean Marie. We're all so happy to see you healthy again. You look great. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have a superintendent report next. Yeah, so let me just cover a couple of things. Uh, I won't take too long. We're immersed in budgets right now, as you could see tonight, the supervisor union budget, then the three other district budgets, and, I, and hats off to all those administrators who work on those budgets, and Ed Connors who juggles four budgets uh, over the course of the, of the fall. It's, uh, it's never easy. I will say in Weathersfield that uh, the town uh, and the select board, and a, I think it reached out to us, and we had a meeting the other night, uh, uh, and it were quite a few people. I was, it was under the guise of kind of an emergency management meeting, but it was also a budget meeting. We talked about the budget. And, uh, and I think what we will do certainly this year is work closely with the town. Brandon, the, your town manager, and myself, we've talked about making sure that we coordinate budgets and, and, and joint presentations. And Brandon really wants to do that. And so does Dave Fuller, the select board chair. So I think that'll be that, that'll be pretty exciting. We, we are waiting for the legislature to convene uh, in January because there may be some changes they were alluded to tonight around the school, the annual school meeting and the annual town meeting. Uh, there's a lot of discussion being placed into whether or not March is the best time for both of those. Maybe the town would go ahead, but not the school, and maybe the school would wait until April or maybe even early May. It would give us more time to plan and prepare and uh, and and present the budget, but we won't know till the legislature gets back into session. I also this Friday we have a legislative uh, breakfast. The southeast superintendents are meeting with all of the legislators uh, in our uh, supervisory union. Uh, I think you know who most of them are: Senators Allison Clarkson, Dick McCormick, and Alice Nitka, and then Representatives uh, John Arison, certainly from your area and then John Bartholomew and Elizabeth uh, Burroughs, who's also on a board, on a school board in uh, uh, wet, uh, Mount Escutney, and she got elected as a, as a representative. We're meeting on Friday to go over some of the key issues, budgets being one of them, and whether or not there'll be any more COVID relief or tax relief based on, but again, the state is is stressed too and stretched out, and you've got to look around, and it's not just schools that are suffering, but I would hate to be a hotel motel owner right now, or a or a restaurant owner. Uh, they they get they're being devastated by uh, by 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 this COVID pandemic. And again, we see some light at the end of the tunnel, and you just hope and pray that they can they can hang on and and work uh, and and work through that. So 
you know, we're just one of the cogs in the wheel in this COVID wheel, and we're just trying to do our our best. But I, I like the I like the cooperation from the town. I like the the, the legislators that we have that are going to be working on our behalf this year. And I'll keep you posted on that. On that, uh, uh, it's it's sort of like a legislative breakfast without the breakfast because it'll be it'll be virtual. Um, but I'll suffer my way through it, and uh, even without the food, uh, and and hopefully we'll make some progress with those uh, with those legislators. Um, but uh, I think that is I think that's about it. Okay, thank you, David. Um, do we have any items for action? I don't think so. No, I think you took care of them all. Um, yeah. And and, and Anne Marie, I know this was your second time. Uh, um, leading the meeting, but uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on and a lot of things coming at you too that maybe initially you didn't sign up for, but, but <laughs> you've, you've done a nice job as the chair of this board and keeping us on, on, on track. And the fact that it's 7.57 and we're getting near the end is, uh, that's, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty darn good. So I, I just wanted to say thank you for stepping up. I'm I'm not quite as verbose as the previous uh, well, chair. <laughs> we all have our strengths, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I guess the next thing to do would be to set the next agenda. I know we definitely want to have the budget on there and a report from the BAC. Yeah, when is that? Our next meeting would be in january right yeah so, i was wondering actually is is that too long like do we need to have a budget meeting before then or is that well, going to be okay i think the budget committee the bac will certainly meet but i think you're all right in early january yeah. i i think when would it be normally is it the second wednesday yeah. it's the yeah. second tuesday tuesday i think it would be the 12th okay yeah no i think i, I think we're i think we're okay with uh with, with that and I think that'll be just and especially if the legislature decides to to move the annual meeting then we'll have a lot more time but I think that's good but I think the budget should be just about you know maybe a COVID update and you know but I, I wouldn't put much else on the agenda that night mm -hmm. maybe athletics and sports they might yeah we, we, we could get an update there because January would have hit yeah Anyone have anything else they want to add to next time's meeting? Jackie has her hand up. Jackie? Uh, I'm just curious if maybe we should tentatively draw on there a like a response from the teachers to what I queried them about earlier. For yeah. Great idea. Take from the teachers. I want to take advantage of that, but at least get it on the agenda. That's good. Anyone have anything else? Will we hear more from the principal search? Yeah. Oh yeah, you will. You will have an update there without a, without a doubt. Yeah, that's a good point. You can put that on. Like pack your jammies for the January meeting. Yeah. Hey, typically, in the past, we've only done done budget at the January meeting because we have to go to press. The deadline is typically about January 19th. Of course, David, you make a good point. If the legislature pushes it, we've got all the time in the world. But um, I just, that's gonna be a long meeting because budget has to be first yes. and foremost. You're gonna have to approve the warning. Uh, Ed's gotta do the pre presentation with um, you know, the CLA, of the, the tax form that he uses, that takes quite a bit of time. And then the BHC is going to see that for the first time. And they have to make some good, hard decisions that night. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll be a long meeting. Yes, I agree. I yeah. think that's probably a pretty full meeting as we have it. Yeah, I changed the invite. So you'll, uh, you, you should all get that invite. And, and I'll add uh, Janine and Jamie to... Uh, Okay. That, that should be in your inbox. And um, and so somebody's going to be contacting the BAC members and getting them together in between. Uh, Ed and I will do that. Yep. Okay. 
because I would like at the next meeting them to have their recommendations for us. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Um, so does anybody have anything else they want to say before we adjourn? I think we're good. Okay. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Sounds like somebody oh, wants Becky to has her hand up. Sorry, Becky. Yeah, I just wanted to know if you were, should I just put no executive session needed? Not tonight, no, right? Okay. Did we have it on the agenda? I, I don't, it might have been on there, but I, I don't know what it would have been for. Yeah. BJ, and, BJ and Jean, we should also have a type for another. It another it's always for. supposed to be on there as tentative. Yeah, I usually uh, we keep it on there just in case. No, I think no, it just have it on the sheet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, right. just, just, just one last thing, too. Tomorrow, you know, we are, uh, Mark Youngling is the representative from Weathersfield on the negotiating team. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow morning, we do have our mediation session. Uh, so um, hopefully we can settle uh, the uh, the teacher contract once and for all. Um, I know that's been on everybody's mind. Probably adds to the stress. So mm -hmm. we'll see. I forgot to add that to my report. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn then. So moved. Mark moved. Do I have a second? Has to be Christy. <laughs> yeah, <I'll> second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's it. All right. All right thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.